It's fair to say that over the years I've picked up plenty of bad photography habits, habits that I try my best to avoid. So in today's video, I share seven of those bad habits with you and some suggestions about how to overcome them. The first bad habit I want to discuss is kind of two rolled into one, I guess. And it's definitely something that took me a while to figure out when I first started photography. And it's choosing the wrong shutter speed, which results in a soft image and then trying to correct that softness with over sharpening in post-production. So if the shutter speed is too slow, it can be very difficult to get a sharp photo if either the objects within your scene or your camera is moving. If you've got any kind of motion blur or camera shake in your photo that you're not looking for from a creative point of view, simply raise the ISO to help you speed up the shutter. I find it's much easier to reduce noise in post-production than it is trying to rectify a soft or blurry image with sharpening. Over sharpening an image can look absolutely terrible in my opinion. So don't be afraid of ISO, it's your best friend. Take some test shots and check if you're happy with how everything is looking. If not, crank up that ISO to get a quicker shutter speed. So what a beautiful scene we have here in front of us. A lovely collection of bluebells and a fantastic grouping of beech trees. The light's lovely and diffused at the minute. We're just pre-dawn, so we're just waiting for that sun to come up a little bit and add a little bit more light into the scene. But I really like the subdued light that we're getting right now. There's a tiny, tiny breeze and we're just getting a little bit of motion in these beech leaves that are overhanging the scene. And as I was talking about long shutter speeds before, and trying to freeze motion. I guess this is a prime example of that because we don't have a huge amount of light at the minute. At f8 with the polarizer on at ISO 125, I'm at four seconds. Now that four second exposure is gonna show some motion in these leaves. Now, I guess I have to think to myself, do I want to show that motion or do I want to eradicate it completely? And quite often with scenes like this, what I like to do is take different exposures with different shutter speeds. So I might start at four seconds here, ISO 125, take a shot, and then I might bump my ISO up to say, let's go up to 320, and then I can get my shutter speed to about two seconds now. So yeah, that's allowed me to you know, get a quicker exposure time, which is gonna freeze a bit more of that motion blur. So quite typically in, in this situation, I'll experiment with di different shutter speeds, different ISOs, and then when I get back to post-production, I can choose the one with the correct amount of motion blur in it for what I'm going for. So quite often, I quite like to see a little bit of movement in my leaves, but perhaps not the bluebells down here in the foreground. Maybe I want to freeze them completely. So yeah, it's just about experimentation. I really love this scene here. I actually think I'm gonna shoot it now before the sun rises, because I think once we get the sunrise coming over the top of this hill here, it's gonna put some harsh light on the, on the trees here because we've got a blue sky. But what a fabulous morning, absolutely beautiful. Let's take this shot now. I think we'll go for ISO 320, two seconds F8, two second timer is on, and the circular polarizer, just taking any shine off the leaves and adding some saturation. Absolutely wonderful. sun come up it got quite harsh it's gonna be very difficult to make any more woodland images so I've come to the coast an absolutely amazing location that I can't wait to share with you hopefully we can bag some images down here this afternoon so when I look back at some of my earlier photos before digital cameras one common theme transcends through those images they were shots of an area without thought really just a record now I'm glad I took those images but if I was more aware at the time, I could have put a lot more thought into those photos. Most of the photos that I took during that pre-digital era were merely snapshots, if you like, that lacked a clear subject, concept, or a theme. I remember back to my thought process then when I approached this amazing beach here, it would be camera out of the bag, click, move on, just like this photo here. These days I have a different approach. I look at the scene and think, what is it about this scene that is interesting? And how can I focus on that, but still show some kind of context to where I am? Quite often our mind will fill in the blank, so we don't necessarily have to show everything to convey the concept or theme. For example, just showing a small part of the beach here, but focusing on this wonderful vertical strata, could make a much more engaging photo than showing everything. 
Of course, composition is a personal choice, but hopefully you can see what I mean. So habit number three is gear. Now I don't want to dwell on this too much as I talk a fair bit about gear on this channel, but I want to say one sentence while I head down this amazing coastal path to this beach. The world's best photographers are not necessarily the ones with the best gear, but are the ones that put in the most effort. My word, this place is beautiful. Absolutely breathtaking. Just wow. Habit number four is neglecting extreme weather conditions. Now weather can greatly influence the mood and impact of a landscape photo. And I think it's fair to say that it's much more pleasant, you know, going out on a day like today when we've got warm blue skies and calm winds, but it will drastically reduce the chances of capturing a dramatic photograph. Now I fall into this trap on a regular basis, mainly because it's so much easier for me to film these videos when there's no wind. So that's definitely something that I want to work on this coming year, and that is to get out and shoot in more extreme weather conditions, because I'm sure I'll be able to capture a completely different set of images from some of the locations I've already visited this year. So I've moved back to the woodland this evening to hopefully capture another bluebell shot. Something sparked my interest when we were shooting that image this morning and I'm hopeful it might work better in the evening light. Sun is just dying down now. So bad habit number five is not arriving to a location early enough. And this is one that I'm still guilty of, especially for sunrise. Quite often the best light is well before sunset or sunrise. So you've got to factor in traveling time, walking to the location and finding a composition if it's a new area. For the most part, if I'm shooting a sunrise, it will be at a location I've previously scouted. Because it can be so difficult trying to find a suitable shot in the dark. Which leads me straight on to bad habit number six, which is not putting in the legwork or exploring new locations and scouting. Arriving at a location without prior research or scouting can lead to missed opportunities. So I guess we all need to take time to research potential location, study maps and visit the area beforehand if possible. Now this preparation can help us to find better viewpoints and shooting angles. Now I spend more time scouting new locations than I actually do taking photographs. But this means that I'm able to find new locations that are personal to me. And I actually really enjoy scouting. I find it really relaxing. I do this quite often with my wife when we're out for a walk, visit a new location, and I'm constantly thinking about possible photo opportunities. Anyway, let's go and see if we can find another bluebell shot this evening. So, I really like the look of this area just up here. So I think I'm gonna work on this for a bit. The wind's really got up actually now. It'll be interesting to see uh, what I can make here. It's definitely a shot here. I just need to piece something together. I've gotta to work quick here because I found a shot that looks great, some nice backlighting. But if I'm not quick, I'm gonna lose that light and it's no longer gonna be backlit. <laughs> So we've got this nice little set of beech trees here, five in total, situated in this glade of bluebells. Actually, the bluebells are very sporadic this year here in West Wales. I think it's something to do with the very cold early part of spring. Now the canopy's covering the woodlands, it's very, very difficult for the flowers to bloom. So I think that may be the reason why. But this patch here is particularly nice, even though it's not that dense, you know. But because we're quite low and the hill goes up at an angle, our plane, our focal plane is skimming across the top of the bluebell. So I'm hoping that's going to accentuate some of that purple colour. Um, in terms of my depth of field, I'm F9, focusing on the second tree on the right there. And that is giving me enough depth of field to get the tree in the foreground in focus and the one in the background. It's, like I said before, it's being backlit by the sun, which is quite nice. It's just setting now, which is really nice. Um, I'm hoping I'm not going to need to bracket this because that's quite, going to be quite tricky. So I'm just hoping to get this in one shot and I'm going to allow a little bit of movement in the leaves to soften those specular highlights. So as the leaves move in front of the light, hopefully it's just going to soften that transition between the bright sky in the background and these darker shadows in the foreground. That's the plan, quarter of a second, F9, ISO 320. Let's grab this image now. 
It looks lovely on the back of the camera. Bad habit number seven is don't discard your worst images. You can learn more about your photography by looking at why a composition didn't work than why a composition did work. Try to analyse your worst images and look for what you didn't like because this will really help so much. Look at the image and analyse why it failed. Was it the light? If so, could you return with different lighting? Would that make the image successful? You know, was it badly composed? Could you use a different focal length to piece the image together better? Were there distractions that could be removed by reframing or using a different focal length? Ask as many questions about why the image failed and it may unlock a new approach to the composition. After all, the reason you made the image in the first place was because something sparked your interest. So a different approach to that scene might well lead to a successful shot. So while it's great to get rid of all of these bad habits from our photography, there's some tools that we can use to improve our photography too. And that's why I highly recommend you checking out this video that's up here. So I do hope you enjoyed this week's video, guys. Please be sure to give it a like if you liked it and why not consider subscribing too. That would really help me out. Anyway, guys, until next time, take care. I'll see you soon.